So Monday Night Raw starts with Roman Reigns coming out and announcing his plans for SummerSlam. And yes, come on now. It's common sense. I called it. Everybody else called it. He says that he can't be beaten one-on-one. -on -one. He, okay, he said to ask Bray Wyatt, ask Finn Balor, ask Seth Rollins, ask Braun Strowman, ask The Undertaker. <sighs> He says that he respects Taker and Taker respects him and he did what he, he reminds us that, okay, did what he had to do and this is his yard and he makes the rules and that's why he can make all the fucking plans. But Samoa Joe comes out and he's like, okay, you never beat me. <laughs> and he reminds me, and okay, the thing about this is that he just called him a man named Joe. He, Roman Reigns called Samoa Joe a man named Joe. And Joe took that as, Samoa Joe took that as disrespect. He goes up in the ring and he's like, let me remind you of my name and who I am. I am Samoa Joe. But Roman Reigns is like, Heyman was right last week. And he calls him just Joe. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Samoa Joe attacks, gives him the headbutt treatment, and starts beating him down. Starts throwing him in, outside the ring and so on and so forth. But miraculously, oh my god, here we go. Superman punch. <laughs> oh god. So you're telling me that they have to come and separate Brock Lesnar and Joe, but they're, this week you're going to show Roman Reigns getting the upper hand. What kind of logic is that? Oh, WWE logic. You see... This Raw was full of crap. It, it just was. Uh, and that set the tone for this week. This week Raw, I... <sighs> Man. Anyway, you have the Hardy Boys go against Anderson and Gallows. In a pretty standard tag team match, which the Hardy Boys end up winning. So Anderson and Gallows is still on the way going down, so to speak. They, at least they were Raw Tag Team Champions, but they just can't get back there. I'm not sure if they ever will at this point. The Tag Team Division is so much in disarray, and that got added to on this edition of Raw. Okay, so... Still no wig. Gold Dust put on... Alright. Raw is coming to LA next week, which I am from, but not able to go to the show. I want to see... Gold Dust come out with the fucking gold wig. Please. If you're gonna go with the Bazaar and the Golden Age that is back and is returned, go all out to the way you used to be, Gold Dust. Please. But Gold Dust, he talks about Hollywood, <laughs> where dreams come true. And he talks about the other side of Hollywood, where dreams get shattered. And he says, next week it'll be the shattered truth. <laughs> The Golden Age is back. Remember the name of Gold Dust. Bring back the wig, Gold Dust. Please, just, just bring that motherfucker back. <sighs> Elias Sampson uh, wanted complete silence from the crowd so he could tune his guitar <laughs> and so he can give a song. But before he even starts singing whatever and tuning his guitar, and he's like, I can wait here all night. <sighs> Finn Balor comes out. Finn Balor basically upstages Elias Sampson. And Sampson stands up. They make eye contact. And Sampson freaking leaves. So you have Finn Balor versus Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas. Isn't Bo Dallas a former NXT champion? And now you have Finn Balor just making short work of him? What happened here? Anyway, Finn Balor wins... Well, okay, that was common sense. I don't think they were going to have Bo Dallas pin Finn Balor. Not this week or maybe even any week. <sighs> Corey Graves leaves the announce table, goes and talks with Kurt Angle about texts that they've been receiving, and then, okay, Enzo and Cass basically walk up, and Kurt Angle questions Enzo about why did he tweet Conor McGregor and Cass cuts him off. He's like, look, you better find out who's been attacking us. <sighs> yeah. So, Seth Rollins is going to be on the cover of WWE 2K18. He thanks the fans for giving him the second chance. 
Bray Wyatt interrupts and he's like, okay. Seth Rollins was contradicting himself because he was talking about, you know, how he's grown and then he went back to put material possessions, vanity. Because Seth Rollins did talk about the possessions and how he's bought in and how he, you know, couldn't even look in the mirror even though he was getting everything that he wanted. Huh. Seth said that, okay, look. Oh, but, but Bray Wyatt was like, yeah, I can feel your struggle. <laughs> and Seth is like, okay, look. Call, he, he, he calls, all right. Bray Wyatt was like, you're not even a man. And Seth is like, I am not just a man. I am the man calls Bray a coward <laughs> and calls Bray a little boy and, step, and he called him a false god so Bray Wyatt was like I warned you, you take my name in vain yeah I warned you Seth it's time to make a sacrifice I'm here, Bray Wyatt comes out and before he can even get to blowing out well right after he blew out his lantern Seth Rollins basically comes from a crossbody from on the top rope to outside of the ring to Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt, I guess, gets busted open in his mouth because there was a little blood on Seth Rollins at the end of the segment as he was walking back up the ramp. Bray Wyatt is down and Bray Wyatt is laughing. Okay, that's fine. Huh. So. Huh. Finn Balor gets an interview backstage. What's next for Finn Balor? Well, that should be common sense. He's going to find his way to the Universal Championship, the one that he never lost. Huh. And then... He proceeds to go and talking about Roman Reigns and, you know, Joe and Lesnar and all that and says that he wants to work his way back to Universal Championship when out of nowhere he gets attacked by Elias Sampson. And Elias is like, if you ever upstage me again, <sighs> he's like, don't ever up upstage me again. And then when the help showed up, usually when there's a backstage attack, people are like certain referees or certain people are like, all right, get him off, get him off, get away. It was Devon. Devon was one of the, was one of the main people that actually came for freaking Finn Balor, and I was like, Devon, damn it, I missed the Dudleys, but they're not in the wrestling game anymore, so I guess they're working backstage, just like J and J Security, just like Finley. Oh well, <sighs> so you have Akira Tozawa versus TJP. And, okay, they're trying to sell this Titus brand stuff, and Titus O'Neil is out there, and he makes the introduction to TJP as the first inaugural Cruiserweight Champion, and then he announces Akira Tozawa as the next Cruiserweight Champion. So, okay, during that match, Neville comes and watches them, comes out and watches the bout from the announcer's table. Neville was pissed. <laughs> he didn't even sit down on commentary. He just got the microphone, he, uh, the commentary booth. He's like, I'm just out here to watch. Okay, so, Akira Tozawa actually beats TJP, and Titus O'Neil basically tries to sell the fact that, okay, yeah, Akira Tozawa, the Titus brand, so on and so forth. Neville gets pissed, and he's like, look, you know, I warned you, you know, yeah. He, he basically warns Tozawa again. As he did before and he's like look he's and he's pissed and Titus is like yeah <laughs> oh god I'm not sold with the Titus brand thing with Tozawa and and him cheering him on and I, I'm just not sold with that I'm just not Ugh. so our truth <laughs> truth be told production all right he accepts the invitation for next week because Goldust basically invited it next week. So I guess they're going to have a match or a bout or a talk or whatever. And basically, R-Truth accepts the invitation and says that Goldust is going to get got. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. But at least they're going to actually... At least this was... Alright. There hasn't been any attacks, but it's been verbal buildup. I guess they can't find any time on the show in order for any attacks or anything like that. I don't know. <sighs> Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel are backstage. Bo Dallas is attending to his wounds and Curtis Axel, you know, comes up and tries to comfort Bo Dallas when the Jizz shows up. Now, look. He wants him to he wants those guys to join him. And talking about the set of Marine 5 and oh god, look. 
He's still trying to sell that movie to us. He's still trying to sell the Marine 5 to us. Has anybody watched the Marine 5? I want to know who you are and comment below. <laughs> but anyway, he the Miz actually has the nerve to talk about both of their, you know, the fact that there's third generation wrestlers. You you do have Bo Dallas that is a third generation wrestler. You do have Curtis Axel who's also a third generation wrestler. And the Miz was like, "Join me." Huh, asking for help again. Because once again, he's a pussy. In an interview with Samoa Joe in the back, he shows footage that he actually beat Roman Reigns months ago. Basically on his first match here. Now they didn't show the part where there was, you know, a little distraction, but nevertheless, Samoa Joe did win. And so he's like, you know, how do I prepare for Roman Reigns? It's like, you know, how does he prepare for me? Huh. <sighs> so, okay. Hmm. Samoa Joe actually goes against Roman Reigns. So, <laughs> Braun mm, Ogre Strowman is back. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, he does look like Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds, and he were, arrived in an ambulance. Now, it was told that he was supposed to be out for like six months, but he showed up here anyway. And that distraction, that minor distraction, Joe hooks up the Coquina Clutch and actually puts Reigns to sleep. So, during Reigns shaking off the cobwebs or anything like that, Braun Strowman actually comes out and actually is like, look, I'm not finished with you. And he picks him up with the reverse, reverse choke slam and dumps him like an ugly prom date and challenges him to an ambulance match at Great Balls of Fire. Great balls of fire. Oh, what a name for a pay-per-view. Come on, WWE, just stick to the names that you already had. This was just great balls of fire. Oh, so not it can't be the Great American Bash. It has to be great balls of fire. Oh, God. Anyway, Jizz TV. <sighs> his guest will be his wife, Maurice. And, well, what do you know? Once again, there's a bear sighting. Or should I say two bears? During this TV, there are two bears in the ring holding up signs talking about forgive me please and I'm sorry. And Maurice hits the ring and basically the Miz starts Joe to sing. Baby, I'm begging, baby, I'm begging, begging, baby. Basically, he starts doing that. So, he starts begging for her forgiveness. Look, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of, I'm, I'm just sick of it, okay? Because, uh, God, there's a big box in the background. Okay, it had a grandfather clock in it, and he and the Miz said that he fixed it. He looked at YouTube videos on how to fix it. No, he fucking didn't. Come on. Pussies don't know how to fix hardware or anything like that. Anyway, it's just that, uh, and then he said the key words, we have the Intercontinental title. You see there? He didn't say he was Intercontinental, he said we because of course he needs her in order, or somebody in order to fucking have the belt, get it, keep it, defend it, and so on. Can't do it alone. So, uh, Ambrose comes out, and Ambrose actually hits the ring. Now, they're champagne, and they're going to be toast and stuff like that. <sighs> Ambrose basically goes to, you know, makes Miz jump. And what did he do? Once again, he hides behind his wife, he pulls her, and champagne gets spilled all over her. I guess she's not used to having his juices all over her. Maybe because they're not doing anything, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, she gets mad at that. He tried, the Miz tries to go after Ambrose, Ambrose sidesteps him, and what do you know, Miz goes and runs into the grandfather clock and destroys him again. Maurice gets mad at that and tries to leave, Miz tries to beg, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, well, ha ha ha, he went for a kiss, 
she she ducks him, she ignores him, goes out of the ring, and all that. So you're an Intercontinental Champion, you're a champion of the WWE, and your wife is making you sleep on the couch. No, just disrespecting this title all the way through. The Miz is just, you know, he's just the, the unfinished fucking blowjob. I mean, come on, he's just like fucking and not busting a nut. There's no real point or purpose. It's just, anyway, so after that happens, the Miz tries to attack and gets ditched from the ring. Huh. Again, the two bears attack Ambrose, and well, what do you know, they're Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Huh. They attack Dean Ambrose, they hold him up, Miz gives him dick licking finale, and what do you know, he needs help again. Now, again, you, you, you see why I don't like this guy. No one else has needed help this fucking much. Not this much. Especially as Intercontinental Champion. Come on, just... Or to do all the work for him? Anyway, you have Sheamus and Cesaro against Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. You're running out of people to face... I, I, look, who who actually thought Apollo and Titus was going to actually win this match? No, they just didn't. Sheamus and Cesaro, oh yeah, we don't set the bar, we are the bar. Yeah, that they win. Fucking yeah. So, they do some Joe Lesnar hype. And it's pretty interesting. I'm not really going to go into the Joe Lesnar hype because, of course, it's just all hype to this point. Ever since they tried to... Look, the hype has been diminished ever since Joe got kicked out of the ring by fucking Roman Reigns earlier on this show. Oh, yeah, then you didn't have the whole roster separate them, those two, and Roman Reigns got their fucking upper hand in a segment against Joe. That Again, WWE logic. Just... Uh, so, you have Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks. <sighs> During the match, Alexa, little Miz Bliss, yeah, Miz, because she acts just like that fucker. <sighs> She's on commentary, and Emma comes out and basically chases Alexa to the ring, and they both get into the ring. Alexa's standing right there. Uh, Emma tries to kick Alexa. Alexa moves out of the way. Nia gets kicked, and Nia Jax wins by disqualification. <sighs> this is, uh, and then this segment fucking continues. Uh, so I don't even know how this fucking happened. Sasha is pissed and and gets up and actually basically gets attacked. How? So Emma was going after Alexa, but Alexa and Emma team up to beat down the boss. Oh, well, what do you know? Mickey and Dana come from the back and they get annihilated by Nia Jax. Oh, but <laughs> Bailey finally returns and she comes back out and she kind of cleans house. But then again, Nia Jax dominates. Dominates to the point where they all have to fucking jump her. Four women have to jump Nia Jax in order to ditch her out. Just give fucking Nia the belt already and be done with it and have her hold it for like a year. Sorry, just... Okay, maybe not a year, but at least four to six months. Ugh. At least until Ember Moon or fucking... No, I don't think that Asuka is gonna go to Raw. She might go SmackDown, but... But if she goes to SmackDown, then she'll just be dominant for the next 50 years. Anyway, uh, you have the whole Kurt Angle, Enzo and Cass situation because Kurt Angle said that he was going to get to the bottom of it by the end of the night. So, and Kurt Angle comes out, Enzo and Cass comes out, and Big Show... Okay, they show fo footage of the Big Show talking to the Revival. They showed them talking to the Big Show all fucking night long. So, what happens? He actually, Angle actually brings the Big Show and the Revival to the ring. 
and actually questions him. He asks the Big Show because Big Cass says that, you know, he got hit in the head once and it knocked him out and it was the hardest he was ever hit. So he asks the Big Show and Big Show is like, after all we've been through on the road and things like that, no, I can't believe that you're asking me this. And if you're going to ask me this, maybe I don't need to be on this show. So Big Show is pissed and he walks away. And Big Cass is like, yeah, we don't need you here. Kurt Angle questions the Revival, but after questioning everybody in the back and so on and so forth, the Revival had tight alibis. Even though every time it was an Enzo and Cass situation of one of them getting jumped in the back, the Revival were not that far behind. But they're still not cleared. Well, one of them, I think Dawson is the one that's not cleared. He had oral surgery. And then Corey Graves actually stands up from the commentary from the commentator's desk and actually cracks the fucking case. Shows footage of Big Cass setting himself up as far as laying things down and then laying down. Hmm. And then, basically, Corey Graves is like, Big Cass, you're the one that attacked Enzo. And Big Cass is like, you damn right I did. So, this is basically the end of Enzo Amore. Sorry. Okay, with this breakup here... Who out there believes that Enzo Amore can make it in singles competition unless he goes full heel? I, no. I don't see it. Not, not as a face, even though he works well as a face. But Big Cass basically spilled it out. He's like, I ha I'm not a champion here because of you. You know, he's sick and tired of him running his mouth. He was like, what the hell is he doing with the Conor McGregor thing on Twitter? He's like, we don't, you just run your mouth. We don't understand what you're saying just wasted an opportunity but now you know he he told him he's right checks with his mouth that he can't cash and now Cass is looking for his future and basically attacks Enzo while Enzo is knocked out he goes over him and he says and you can't teach that so there you go Enzo and Cass split up. And it's kind of sad because they never got the tag team belts. We never saw the New Day versus Enzo and Cass. We never even saw them fucking mic it up. We never saw them duel on the mic. We never saw anything. Okay, I even predicted at WrestleMania that Enzo and Cass were going to get it, and they didn't get it. They didn't get the tag team championships ever. They didn't even win them in NXT. So I think it's kind of sad that they just broke this tag team up and now at least they have a direction for Cass to a certain point. But what about Enzo? Is he going to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship? Is he going to be a, a wait? Is he going to drop a little weight or does he qual already qualify to be in a cruiserweight division? Who knows? But it just or is he Enzo going to go back to NXT? But it, they made their choice. Vinny Mac likes big ass dudes. They made their choice. So basically big Cass is now on his own. So that was the show. Do you think my opinions are full of shit? Do you agree? Do you even disagree? Please comment below. I just, this Raw, hardly any of the faces came out on top. Besides Seth Rollins on his segment. Oh, and the women faces after Bailey came out and they had to jump Nia Jax and leave her out. I, I don't know. This is just... Oh, and Akira Tozawa. Fine. The tightest brand. Still not sold on that shit. So, hit that like button. Hit subscribe. I'm always open for a debate about wrestling. Drop kicks, body slams, drum up, over the top rope, both of you hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.